I started as a creator in 2011. I was uh, on YouTube very early days. So I was posting YouTube videos about fashion and makeup and beauty. I was really young at the time, I was 15. What are the top three lessons to draw from creator-led businesses? Because this ecosystem is a bit new. I think that with creator-led businesses, something that they do really well is they bring their audience, their users, their customers into the journey. A lot of traditional businesses just kind of say like, hey, look out for June 3rd. 30th, we're going to announce something. And I think a lot of times traditional businesses get scared that someone's going to copy them or someone's going to take their idea. And I actually think it's the opposite. People can copy you, but like when you're the first one to think about it, you're the one with the pain point. You're the one that's talked to a bunch of users already. Like they're not going to do it as well as you. And then launch day, like we are bombarded with advertisements. If you just launch one thing one day, like I'm going to forget about it in an hour. If I've been hearing about it because I've been in the journey with you for weeks, I'm not going to forget about it because that's something that I feel like I'm a part of now. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting in the world of influencer marketing? I think number one, it's a relationship business still. Like, yes, there's a lot of software and tools, but at the end of the day, you're working with other humans and you are building relationships with them. And similarly with creators, creators need to realize that they're working with humans at the brand. And so that it's a relationship business. And I think that even if you're smaller, use that to your advantage. So Start meeting people. One, two. Welcome everyone to season two of Impulse, the influencer marketing podcast. I'm your host, Shubham Tiwari, head of content and socials at Philo, the universal API for creator data. Our guest today is Natalie Babu. Uh, She's the co-founder and CEO at Rella. Rella is an app designed to help creators and their teams manage their social media presence more efficiently. It functions as an all-in-one social media management and planning tool. More about Rella later on. And Natalie, uh, of course, is herself is a content creator. She creates podcasts, conversations, daily life vlogs, travel diaries. Uh, so we are doubly excited to have her because she is a creator and running creator-led businesses. So Natalie, uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and chat all things creator. So let's start on a fun note. Uh, give me your most controversial hot take on the creator economy. Oh, okay. Um, I think consistency and putting out content actually matters more than the quality of content in today's day and age, which I feel like is a hot take because a lot of people will say quality over consistency. But I think when you are just starting out, all that matters is that you are posting a lot of content to see what resonates, what content you like, what your audience wants to see. And then later on, you can get better quality. But too many people focus on making sure they have the perfect video or the perfect piece of content. And then they upload it and it doesn't really do anything. Like there doesn't doesn't get a lot of views. They don't really get a lot of feedback from their audience because their audience doesn't know them yet. So if you look at people that have been blowing up lately or really successful lately, they've just posted a ton of content really in a short amount of time, or at least when they started. And I think that is more important in today's day and age when you're starting out. Right. So it's more about experimentation at the beginning. The quickly you can do experiments, the better it will be, or the faster you'll find your audience. That's what you say. Exactly. Yeah. You'll find your audience quicker. You'll find what they like, and then you can, you know, get better. And also consistency is important throughout your entire creator journey. So if you can learn how to be consistent early on, it's definitely going to help you. Right. Natalie, tell me a little bit more about your career path and what led you to build Rella for creators. Yeah, so I started as a creator in 2011. I was uh, on YouTube very early days. So I was posting YouTube videos about fashion and makeup and beauty, and I really loved it. I was really young at the time. I was 15, but I, I loved creating that content, and I just continued it throughout high school and college. And in college I created, I was always knew I was going to do something more technical. So I got my degree in industrial engineering. And then in college, I was posting a lot of day in the life, week in the life as an engineering student and a lot about, you know, choosing your major in college and what path to go on. And it resonated with a lot of specifically like women in STEM um, or women that were interested in going into STEM. And so that really helped. And then when I graduated, I worked for Accenture, which is a consulting company. And so I attracted a lot of people that wanted to work in the corporate world or wanted to go the consulting route and kind of follow that path. And then 
I was able to quit my job. I started an agency where I helped brands run their social media accounts and had multiple social media um, small, small businesses that I was helping run. And that, along with being a full-time creator, really inspired me to solve this problem that I had where I was using so many different apps to send and manage and upload my content. It was very disorganized. I felt like the future was social media, but yet the tools that were out there were very outdated and not built for social media content to be shared, collaborated on, uploaded easily. And I wanted to create something that did that. So I created Rella, which is that you know simplification of collaboration and content management for any social media team. So whether you're an agency like myself or you're a full-time creator like myself, you can use it because you are sharing social media content and working on content and we just save a lot of time. So dove into that world all while still doing content creation. And I've always just kind of chased my curiosities and what I've been interested in and dived headfirst into it, which is how I started a YouTube channel how I started an agency and now it's how I became a tech founder is just like I wanted to solve something and I thought I could do it and here we are and I still create content so I get to share the journey which is really fun it's great what's the story behind the name Rella so we always wanted Rella to be to sound friendly like you're a creator assistant like it was always something that like I wish I had this on my team so I wanted it to sound personable friendly relatable about relationships not transactions and kept using those phrases and those words and our team came up with a few different iterations and then Rella was one of them because it sounds like a real like it sounds like a human name but it's not like it's not like an actual person's name and it just like rolls off the tongue it sounds friendly and inviting. And so that's kind of how we came up with Rella. It will be, you know, very fun if you come across someone actually named Rella someday. I <laughs> know. <laughs> I actually have come across someone whose last name was Rella. And I thought, oh, I was okay. like, oh my gosh, that's really funny. Um, but I haven't come up with anyone that's first name is Rella yet. Right. Now, speaking of meeting with people, uh, how do you build relationships with influencers? And I'm saying meaningful long-term mutually fulfilling relationships. Yeah, I think from a brand perspective or me, like myself personally? Like you as the founder of uh, Rella. Got it, yeah. I, for me, I, I definitely have tapped into my network of being in the creator space for so long, but I think the key is to actually care about their opinion, care about their feedback, take it into account, show them that you're working on it, show them that you are thinking about their needs and their pain points first, not that you just want them to promote your product because you think it's going to do well, because people can see right through that. If you're reaching out to someone and you're like, hey, like I'm the founder of this company, I'd love to chat with you. They can tell if it's because you want them to promote it or because you actually care. And so the way we show it is we, we're we constantly showing what we're working on. We're showing our different iterations. We're showing the feedback that we've gotten and how we've implemented it into the product. Like we're showing those things to build trust. We're building in public as well. So other creators actually approach us a lot of times. They're like, hey, I love what you're doing because I see what you're doing. And so I think being transparent is like the best way to go when it comes to, to that. Um, so I would say being very honest and authentic when you're reaching out to the creators and actually listening to them and not just wanting a promotion from them is a great way to build relationships. Cause that way, when, when it comes down to actually asking them for something like they already have, you know, have had multiple conversations with you, they know what you're working on. It doesn't just feel like a transactional thing. Right. And once you have developed that, you know, initial trust, uh, mutual trust with the influencers. How do you build, you know, momentum around influencer marketing? Yeah, I think for us, we've done focus groups where we'll give it to people for free. And then like all at what during a launch day, like they're posting about it at the same time. Um, you can also do like we have like webinars that we host where we invite creators to speak on the webinar. That way they're providing value to their audience and we give them that platform. And it's great because they get to build trust with their audience. They get to see it get in front of a new audience and then a lot of people that follow them hear about us because they're on our webinar so it's just getting creative ways rather than just an exchange for like hey we'll pay you to post about us because people now are in are, are programmed to scroll past a brand deal it's like oh this yep. is an ad scroll but if they feel like if they're getting value out of it so a webinar, for example, or, hey, these people were on a focus group, they were working on this product, I want to see what it was, you know, 
that is a more creative and actually valuable way to get in front of their audience, I think. Right. Speaking more of Rela, what is something that you're looking to add to Rela? A functionality maybe, or let's say another tool that you're adding to it. What's in the offering for creators? Yeah, so actually we're kind of doing the reverse of that. We're simplifying it. I think a lot of times we... People might think that, you know, creators need a bunch of different tools and platforms and all of these different like functionalities. And as long as you are a simple tool that saves them time, makes them be able to like do what they love for a living and make more money, like creators and people that work in social media don't like doing admin. So you don't want them actually spending as much time on your tool. You want to make their life easier where they don't have to spend as much time on admin. So we're simplifying to really be the best way that you can collaborate on your content. So like sending files, getting feedback, getting approvals, um, and then planning and auto posting so that you can actually go back and spend more time creating that content and you're sharing it with who needs to see it. So whether it's with the world on all of your different platforms or with your team internally or with a brand that you're working with externally, we want the one we want to be the one-stop shop for it so you're not constantly switching between these different platforms and tools um, and we give you back your time. So we're actually rolling back some things rather than adding because I think less can sometimes be more in this case. Yeah, clearly. And it's uh, working really well for Rilla. Uh, what are the top three lessons to draw from creator-led businesses? Because this ecosystem is a bit new and all of us are learning from each other. So what will be your three pieces of learning? Mm-hmm. I think that with creator-led businesses, something that they do really well is they bring their audience, their users, their customers into the journey. I think a lot of traditional businesses just kind of say like, hey, look out for June 30th, we're going to announce something and then they don't say anything else. And then it's an announcement and then it kind of falls flat. Whereas creator led businesses are creators are so used to bringing their audience into their life that it's a no brainer that they're going to bring them into their business. And so they're sharing the behind the scenes. They're sharing They're again, listening to the audience about like, what do they want to see? What do they, what, what, do they want what feature do they want what product do they want and they're actually listening bringing them in so that way when launch day comes or when the new feature drops their audience is so excited because they've been hearing about it they've seen the process they've seen the hard work that goes into it and i think a lot of times traditional business get businesses get scared that someone's going to copy them or someone's going to take their idea or if it's not this big you know moment of like a surprise then it's going to take away from the momentum and i actually think it's the opposite people can copy you. But like when you're the first one to think about it, you're the one with the pain point, you're the one that's talked to a bunch of users already, like they're not going to do it as well as you because you're already ahead of them if they copy you after you've started talking about it. And a lot of people don't copy ideas that quickly like that, you know, like there's a lot of planning and time to go into it. So I don't think you need to worry about that. And then launch day, like we are bombarded with advertisements, new features, new drops, new whatever every single day. If you just launch one thing one day, like I'm going to forget about it in an hour. If I've been hearing about it because I've been in the journey with you for weeks, I'm not going to forget about it because it's it's something that I feel like I'm a part of now. And so I think a lot of traditional businesses can take that can take some of those lessons away from creator-led businesses. I think more businesses are going to need to be creator-led, whether it's the founder becoming a creator themselves or hiring a creator internally, they're going to need to start documenting like the ins and outs of their business. Right. In a way, it's about creating a community around your business or building your business about people. That's it. And you yep. have to like take them uh, on a fun journey, I would say. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's taking them on the journey. Yeah, taking them on the journey where you are both growing or like both in terms of creators as well as businesses. But businesses usually, you know, fail to become, fail to humanize their, you know, uh, efforts. When we when we look at the LinkedIn pages, let's say, they're so monotonous, so robotic. It's like you really struggle to find a post which you'll remember the next day, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So that's something I think Rela is doing really well. So apart from that, what sets Rela apart from other social media management tools? And how does Rela specifically cater to the needs of creators? 
Yeah, I mean, number one, I am a creator. So I feel like all of the little nuances, we definitely understand. Like we sync with the tools that you're already using, like Google Calendar, for example, your post will show up on Google Calendar because I know that that's what a lot of creators are using. We're a mix between like the project management side of things and the planning side because there's more than just the finalized content. Um, and then also we understand that you're going to need to share things and collaborate with people outside of your own team, whether it's a brand that you're working with, clients that you're working with, uh, editors, whatever. We want to give you the flexibility that you can share your content with the world and who needs to see it and then also get it done by like sending it to the brand, getting that feedback, getting approval, sending it to your editor, having them upload then the reels and every the the reels and the graphics and everything all in one spot. So you're all of your content, all of your projects live in one place versus Google Drive, email, spreadsheets, Asana, whatever else you might be using. It's this like one centralized place. And this has come out of my need of being a creator. So we're more than just a content planner. Um, right. And so I always like to reiterate on that, that it's like I've lived and breathed the pain points for years. So I'm excited to have something that helps someone like myself. So you bring that empathy naturally to the business. You understand yeah. them inside out. Uh, one another, you know, movement that is taking place nowadays is that founders of, you know, various businesses are looking to become creators. Some mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, others on, you know, let's say uh, TikTok or uh, Instagram. But you come from the other direction. You were a creator who founded a business, right? So uh, how do you, as a creator, you know, include Rela in your content strategy? I ask this for those founders, co-founders who are looking to, let's say, use their voice to, uh, you know, help their company? Yeah. So, I mean, I have, I do have that background where it's like, I've actually switched from, I'm now a creator that started a business, but I think creator or businesses that want to become more like creators, it could benefit them to hire an in-house creator. I think, I don't, I think if you need to like hiring someone who has experience, who is a creator already can really help jumpstart your business so that you're not trying to figure all of this out on your own. So I think that's, number one. Um, but also it's think about more, you're showing your, the journey of building and you're, you're bringing them along as if it's kind of like a reality TV show. You can think about it like that. And you're having your audience or your users or your customers understand the decisions that you're making. Cause so often as business owners, we're constantly making decisions every single day. And we're wondering how will the, how will our users perceive this like actually at Rella because like I said we're simplifying things we're rolling things back we're we're wondering like okay how will our audience perceive like us doing this and something that we're going to do is we're going to just film a video talking about our thought process like hey this is what we're thinking this is why we're doing this let us know your thoughts so that people don't just say like wait what I don't understand it now they have the context now they have they understand why and it's going to be perceived I think a lot more on understanding are a lot better, even if maybe originally they might have been like, I'm confused of why you're doing something like this. It just brings more empathy and community and to your business. So even if you can just start with like filming videos like that, instead of, you know, vlogging your day or whatever, if you're a business owner, I think that's a good start. It's just bringing them in before you just announce something is like the key thing that you have to think about. Like, what are you willing to share with your audience to really understand like, the values of your business and bring them into this community. But I think hiring a content editor or a content creator in-house could really help like tell your story. It's just storytelling. Being a creator is, is storytelling. Yeah. And being vulnerable and not being very, you know, trying to project a very flawless image. Yeah. I, I can think of, you know, uh, Carl Pei, the founder of Nothing in the tech company. I think he's doing really well as a creator, as a founder who's turning into a creator. And I think they have multiple creators in house. So what you're saying is, of course, a great, great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Natalie, what is next for you as a creator? I mean, I love creating content. It's always been my creative outlet since I was 15. So I don't think I'm going to stop anytime soon. Um, I am very excited to just like continue to show people about what it's like to be a founder and especially being a woman in tech. I think there's not that many of us, period. And there's not that many of us creating yep. content and on top of that. So I am always posting the content that I wish I had. And I've been doing that since I started. Like I wish that I had, you know, engineering content when I was in school. So I started creating it or consulting content. So I created it. And the same thing goes now. Like I wish I had 
founders that were creating more content that I could relate to. And so I'm creating that content for hopefully the next wave of people um, that want to start a business and kind of want to see what it's really like. Like I'll show you the behind the scenes of it. And I show my personal life too, which is fun because that way I feel like there's more of a, you see the balance of it. Cause sometimes it can be hard to relate to someone if you don't know what they're like personally going through. So I like to, again, like I said, use it as a creative outlet and really connect with my audience. Yes. That connection needs to be there all the time. Uh, let's again, come to the fun questions as we are edging, you know, closer to the end of this interview, which influencer would you most like to take to lunch? Ooh, I would say Mariana Hewitt because she is a creator, but she's also the founder of Summer Fridays, which is a really successful beauty brand. And I think she's done such a good job of being a creator, having building an audience, building a company that lives a, apart from her. Like her company isn't six is it's not like a creator merch company, you know, it's it's a really good product. It's a really good brand. They're one of the fastest growing beauty brands in Sephora, like period, like not creator brands, just like beauty brands in general. And I think it's really amazing that she was able to still maintain being a content creator and growing this really successful business that's successful, not because her name is attached to it, but because it's just a really good company and a good product. And so I'd love to chat with her. Sounds right. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's just starting in the world of influencer marketing? In terms of like they're working with creators, like they're a brand working with creators or they're a creator themselves? Like being a human in this industry, not just okay. think in terms of numbers. right? Yeah. I think number one, it's a relationship business still. Like, yes, there's a lot of software and tools that can match you with people and can, you know, auto generate campaigns and see the ROI and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you're working with other humans and you are building relationships with them and creators work with brands that they resonate with, that they appreciate, that they respect. And creators also work with brands that give them creative freedom and value their artistry in a sense like yes it's yep. it's a it's a work of art when you're creating a, a video you know even if it doesn't look like that like you're adding your own style you're adding your own music your own you know video shots b-roll clips whatever it is you're editing it in your style and i think brands need to appreciate that and then similarly with creators creators need to realize that they're working with humans at the brand and so that it's a relationship business where if you have a bad experience, if you're unprofessional, if you are rude, if you're, you know, not treating this as a job, you're not going to get booked with other brands because they're people that talk, you know, like people are talking in the industry and you're going to be someone that people are going to say, hey, don't work with her. She wasn't a great experience to work with, even if you do have a lot of followers or even if you do have a good community. So just remember, it's still people based. And I think that even if you're smaller, use that to your advantage. Start meeting people. Like go to lunch with someone that works at a brand that you want to work with. Like it's like even things like that, like get on a Zoom call with someone like that because it's still an industry that is driven by relationships. That's a great point. Uh, last couple of questions. They're not like questions. They're more like rituals uh, we make our guests go through. Uh, you have to tell us uh, the book that you're reading or a show you might be watching, anything that is on your mind. And second one is, would you like to nominate anyone for our show so that we can continue to do this? Yeah. Um, okay. So the book I'm reading now is called Lost and Founder. It's really good. It's about, yeah. uh, it's a founder. Um, he's the founder of a SEO company and he's just sharing his lessons of building this company and all of like the mistakes that he's made. And it's really helpful as another founder. And then I would say in terms of another influencer that I think you should interview, I think Mariana Hewitt would be amazing. So you should totally get her on. Um, Grace Beverly is another one who's doing a great job with um, being a creator and also owning a business since she's raised a venture backed business too. It's like a workout wear company uh, or athleisure company. So other creator business owners I think would be really interesting to have. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you for creating Rela. Thank you for supporting and making influencers lives very easy uh we continue to you know uh pan or actually see your journey and we are really happy uh, for whatever you're doing uh thank you for coming to the show and 
for everyone, if you have anything to tell us, if you uh, have any feedback, please reach out to me. Reach out to Natalie. She's on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Uh, follow Rella uh, if you want to become a member of the tribe. And uh, yeah, please comment uh, in the comment section about this uh, this uh, interview that we did. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Impulse, the influencer marketing podcast is brought to you by Philo. Philo is the easiest way to get access to authenticated creator data from hundreds of different platforms. To know more about Philo, visit getphilo.com. That's get p h y l l o dot com. Also, make sure to search for Influencer Marketing Podcast in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast listening platforms. And don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Philo, thank you so much for listening.